Hello, I will be talking about the, the README files uh, and how you can uh, implement or like how, how can you uh, write the README files for your project. But first of all, like why, why would you and what is the role of the README files? Um, ah, but now I can't. Uh, yeah, okay. So actually I look at the same as Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I already introduced myself, but uh, briefly, my name is Mateusz Kuzak. I work at the Netherlands eScience Center, and actually, uh, uh, quite a lot of my work is involved in training and around software best practices, uh, where we also teach uh, how to run open source projects. Uh, so, creating readme files is one of the things that we we teach. Actually, um, whenever I talk about open source, I say you should start with. Uh, when you're uh, starting open source project, you actually start with open sourcing it from day one, but then start with the readme file. This should be the first thing that you're actually writing. Um, so I will talk about uh, how to use readme uh, to communicate uh, your project effectively, um, learn how to write the crew description of your project. Uh, I will um, list some examples uh, where you can find more, so you can follow the, the links, you can look at different examples. Uh, but also some more resources about uh, how to write uh, a readme file. Um, and then after I stop talking, you will actually create your, uh, or revise your readme files or project descriptions. Uh, so I believe the, uh, this is where we are in the OLS project. Uh, so the, the readme file touches upon communication and people understanding uh, what your project is about. Um, and actually, so this is the, the, I guess, the motto of the Open uh, Leaders, uh, uh, yeah, Open Life Sciences project. But actually, I like it because it fits very well with the what, why do we need README files? Because you want to empower others to collaborate. And if the, the README file is there to actually empower them, yeah? So the, the, to give them tools and to give them channels and to give them uh, the reasons to collaborate with you, yeah? Uh, and then the readme file is a bit like a like a doormat where uh, people see it before they even enter the project. Yeah, <laughs> they, they this is the first thing they see. Um, so what is the readme file? Uh, you already mentioned that uh, this project like we we do use GitHub as an example of uh, or like we use it for as a collaboration platform. So the GitHub um, uh, uses readme files. Uh, as a, like the, the first uh, thing that people see uh, as a description of the product. So re readme is in principle a, a, a file, which is called readme, uppercase uh, readme. Uh, it could be readme.md because usually, uh, and especially on GitHub, uh, the format or the, the language that you would write the readme in uh, would be markdown. So that's why it's readme.md. Uh, for Markdown, uh, but it if you don't use GitHub, if you have some uh, use some other platform, the README could be a web page, like the front page of your project, uh, describing your project. Um, and so, as I mentioned, if you if you uh, README is a file, uh, and in this file you describe what uh, your project about, and then if you put this file in the root of your project on GitHub then this will be the first thing people see when they go to GitHub, uh, on GitHub uh, to your project. Um, so this is the, really the first opportunity and often the only opportunity, because if you lose this opportunity and people get discouraged on, or don't get int uh, interested uh, in your project, they might not come back. So you should like, uh, seize this opportunity and uh, describe your project well. Um, so what should go into the readme? Uh, describe what you're doing or what the project is doing, who is the audience of the project, why people should be using your project or like the, the tools that you're developing and so on, why people would care. Uh, how does this project uh, differ from other similar projects and uh, maybe why uh, people would like to get involved in this project in the first place. Um, how to get started, which could mean how to get started with using the things that the project is about or how to get started as a contributor. And I think this is something that you have to keep in mind that the README often will be for both types of audience. It will be to the people who will use the things that your, uh, your project is about or people who would like to contribute or collaborate on that. <coughs> um, and then also list the resources. Um, 
So this is uh, the, the example of the, uh, of the readme file, uh, how it can be uh, found on GitHub. This is project by Kirsty Whitaker. Uh, and you can see here, like there's the welcome message. You want to warmly welcome people who come uh, see your project. There's a description. Um, there are links, uh, descriptions, how to, so links to the documents on how to contribute or how to get involved. What is the license? What is the code of conduct? So this is also like a, a, um, a place which will, uh, a map to your project. Yeah. So people will find all the links that are relevant for your project. So they should be able to find all those things from the readme file. Um, so what else? Uh, I think I believe it's very important that in the README file you communicate the expectations about the readiness of your project. You don't want people to start using the project uh, uh, or yeah a tool uh, before it's ready, or at least they they can use it, but they should understand that it maybe it's not ready yet. Yeah, um, uh, you should communicate the expectations for and manage contributions to your project. Uh, say how people can contribute. Uh, and also, what are the communication channels? And then, um, I really like the, the, to use the badges in the README files. This is a, a nice way to communicate things around your project. So you can say, if you would like to cite my software, this is the DOI. If you would like to download, this is uh, the link to the release. Uh, this is the license and so on. Um, so these things are called badges or shields, uh, I believe. Uh, that's a shields IO uh, project. Uh, so you can put it at the top of your readme file, uh, which is nice. Uh, Yo, how am I doing with time? Uh, you're okay, um, but faster rather than slower is probably also good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I can speak very fast, you know that, but maybe... Medium <laughs> fast, maybe. Medium fast, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, I'm almost, I'm almost there. So you can add emojis. Actually, I, I think emojis are a very nice way of making your uh, readme less dry and more inviting and uh, more uh, friendly in expression. Uh, since we are like, uh, people are reading it, it's very difficult to express friendliness through the, uh, through the text itself. So I really advise using the uh, emojis. Um, you can also use animated GIFs, which I, actually I was struggling if I should say that, but at the same time, so um, I think it's very good way to uh, communicate uh, very, in, in an easy way, describe what your tool is doing without a lot of text. People can just see what the tool is doing. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think that it does decrease the accessibility or yeah of your of your readme. At the same time, if someone if if things about your tool or project are visual, then they yeah they, they're visual anyway. So I'm not sure. Uh, I'm actually interested in this uh, hearing your uh, opinion on that. Um, so it's very important that you use uh, accessible language, uh, simple language, don't use the jargon. Uh, it's very easy to expect, like you're in your domain, uh, you're describing the tool maybe, or a project which is within your domain. So it's easy to uh, like stay in this bubble and, and use a lot of jargon that you think that everyone should, uh, like the words everyone should be knowing. So it's a very nice example with the, uh, um, you may be uh, familiar with XKCD comic and the outer uh, uh, what's it? Randall Monroe? No, Randall Monroe, I think. Uh, he also wrote, wrote a book which is called uh, Things Explainer, where, where he only uses uh, the most common 10 hundred words um, to explain things. Uh, here is the rocket, which is uh, actually, it's not a rocket, it's an upgoer, because the rocket is no, not one of the 10 hundred most uh, popular words. Um, so he, 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 this is like an exercise of uh, like really being able to explain in very uh, plain words complicated things, which actually turns out to be uh, possible. Um, so, uh, also, don't use uh, acronyms or at least explain them if you, if you do. Um, you can, so we're not going to try it now, but I think after my talk, we'll have a breakout and you're going to try out. There is an online editor which uh, allows you to uh, do the same. So use the only 10, 10 hundred words, uh, most common 10 hundred words to describe your project. Uh, so you work on your project description and the readme file. Uh, there are some more resources. Uh, and I, I actually really like the list of awesome readmes. Uh, there's not only the list of readmes, but there's also a lot of 
uh, resources that are listed that you can use to learn more about how to write good readme files. Um, yeah, and that's me.